actually can't remember buying this. It's a bit worrying, isn't it? Oh my gosh, I've just realised I did actually have something purple. Silly me. In this video, I'm going to talk you through how I sort out my wardrobe for the coming seasons. That's fall, winter 2023. And to guide me, I'm going to use my own fact sheet that I developed last year, which is available to download in the description box below this video. And it's completely free. Hello and welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm Des. I'm a nearly 70 year old woman who loves to talk about beauty, fashion and lifestyle for the woman touching 70. Now this is actually year three of my capsule wardrobe videos and it's part two of my new series, What to Wear at 70. In part one, I focused on what styles and colours are in this season and what might suit us as we move into our 70s and beyond. And in this video, I'm going to be looking through all my four winter pieces, deciding what to keep and what to sell or donate, and deciding what pieces I want to bring into my wardrobe to keep it fresh and interesting and exciting as well as ensuring it's suitable for my life right now. So a little bit about me if you're new to my channel. I'm nearly 69, I'm still working and I'm in the office two days a week and my wardrobe requirements are style and comfort, but I do like to dress up occasionally as well. So we're gonna start by looking at what we've got. And as I said, I'm gonna be using my capsule wardrobe fact sheet as a guide, and that's gonna help me decide what I want to keep and what I want to chuck. Now, just before we get into that, what I wanted to mention was I had my colors done recently, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll link that down below for you in the description box. And when I say I've had my colours done, that's about having my colours seasoned, if you like. So am I spring, summer, autumn, winter, or nuances thereof? And that was a fantastic experience. I so enjoyed it. The, and the details of the stylist I used will be down below in the description box as well. But the video wasn't sponsored and this isn't sponsored either. I just really enjoyed having that session with her. And it was an online session. It was absolutely fantastic. And that's going to help inform the colours and styles that I keep and those that I want to declutter. But I thought it would be really interesting just briefly before we go into what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to chuck. I thought it'd be helpful to talk about the way that colours can affect our moods. And there are some key colours or key types of colours that Anna talks about that will make us feel good or help us to feel better if we're not feeling so good. So let me just quickly tell you what they are. And obviously the actual colours will depend on your colour code, she calls it. So I'm just going to refer to my notes. So the power colour she talks about. Now that's a colour that helps you command the right amount of authority and attention. And Anna says her colour is red. Now I think, and I know you might think this is terribly boring, but I think my power colour is black. Because yes, I can enhance that colour with gold or silver jewellery and maybe a statement scarf or something, but I definitely feel at my very best when I'm wearing black. I feel authoritative, I feel powerful, I feel confident. I would say black is my power colour. Now she also talks about a heartfelt colour and she says this could be to connect you emotionally with a partner, child or friend or yourself. It's a let your guard down and open your heart type of colour. Now I'm not sure I've quite figured that one out yet, but I suppose it could be something like pink because I connect that with my emotions. So that's something to bear in mind. Then there's a focal colour, which is a colour to wear when you feel extremely stressed and need a degree of release and comfort. Now Anna suggests that green is a good colour and I suppose that could be true. I haven't quite connected with the way these colours make me feel because it's still such early days for me in terms of connecting with my colours but I think green is something to think about and I do have green in my colour palette. Then she also talks about a dramatic colour which is the colour to wear when you lack energy and potentially feel withdrawn or down. Now that's an interesting one. Again, I'm not entirely sure what I would wear, but I don't think black would be it. I think it's more likely to be white if I'm going to choose anything. And white is also in my colour palette. It's something that's supposed to lift our spirit and create a positive visual impact. So yes, possibly white for me. And then finally, your authentic colour. And this is the colour that's meant to capture the essence of your entire personality. It's supposed to give you extra energy, but if you're already feeling good, it will create maximum impact, helping you to project the full force of your personality. Now, we did briefly touch on this with Anna, and 
and I wondered whether purple might be my colour because I haven't actually got anything purple but I know it's a colour that in the past I have worn and I was thinking about it for this wedding dress that I'm looking for, not a wedding dress, for a wedding that I'm going to at Christmas and I wondered whether purple would be a good colour because obviously you can't wear black, can't wear white so I'm thinking about purple and I'm thinking about introducing it into my fall winter wardrobe. So with all that being said, let me now crack on with sorting through my clothes. So first of all, let's look at jeans. I'm wearing a pair of blue jeans. I have actually left my other pair of jeans downstairs, but I have two pairs of blue jeans. I have these straight legs and I have a pair of frayed, slightly shorter jeans, which I love, both of which I love. These are whistles, I think, from a few years ago, and my other jeans are Uniqlo. Now, I've got a pair of straight leg black jeans, which are the same as, which are the same as these, the same style, but they're in that slightly washed black, which I'm not actually that mad about. I prefer a deeper shade of black, more like these. I need to decide whether I'm going to keep them. These I wore in, I think it was my What I Wore in a Week video, which I can link down below for you. And these are wide leg jeans and I think I will keep these because I think wide leg jeans are definitely in at the moment and I, it depends what I can style them with. I think I bought them quite late on in the year, I think it was March and then the weather sort of improved and I didn't, I don't know, I just didn't get the opportunity to wear them all that much or to style them but I'm definitely keeping those. The black jeans I'll keep, I'm not that keen on them but I'll probably keep them anyway because they're useful. Now let's think about other bottoms. What other bottoms? Oh yes, we've got these whites. Now these white jeans, well they're not really jeans, they're kind of a cross between jeans and chinos. And they're the same as these black ones. So I've got a white, well they're sort of cream I suppose, and black pair. I mean I like them, but they are very slim fitting. And I know it's not terribly fashionable at the moment to wear slim fit jeans, but I think they do suit me because I've got nice slim legs and I like to show them off. I'll definitely be keeping them, I certainly won't declutter them, but whether I wear them a lot this season I don't know, but we'll see. And that's really all we've got for bottoms. I've got a pair of white cotton jeans and a pair of cream cotton jeans, which are not really this sort of season, although you can wear white jeans in the winter, but not sure about that. So they probably won't come out till next year, and actually to be honest I'm not sure I've worn them this year. However, I am going to the Caribbean in January, so I'll probably keep the white jeans for that trip. That's all the bottoms I've got. I don't own any skirts. I am though coveting one that I mentioned in my first video of the fall winter season 2023 which I'll also link down below for you and I am thinking about getting that black silk or satin skirt that I mentioned so I think I need to order it and just try it on but I'm so resistant to skirts because I've got this big waist so much bigger waist that in proportion to my hips and bust and I always feel I need to minimize it and skirts just never seem to sit well on me also because I'm short-waisted but anyway we'll see I might well buy it and see how it looks. Right, let's get on to tops. And as you can see, I've got rather a lot. We're just going to dispense quickly with the jackets. Or not di oh, well, I have actually got one more bottom and it's these pleated trousers or plisse, they call them, don't they? They're quite popular at the moment. And I bought these and I also bought a cream pair from Uniqlo. I think the black pair I probably could take into fall because although it's a very light fabric, if I wore tights or leggings underneath, I'd certainly be warm enough. And I'll just have to see whether they will style well with the jumper or sweater, as you call them in the US. And I'll just have to see about that. But I really did like the style of them, so I will definitely be keeping them in abeyance anyway. Right, jackets then. So I haven't brought my coats because we're not in to coat weather and we're not going to be for a while, I hope. And this jacket from Uniqlo, I think I bought it. Actually, do you know, I can't remember when I bought it now. But again, I think it was one of those jackets I wore in my what. I wore in a week video a few months ago and I really love it. It's, it is light, it is a sort of heavy cotton but it's great for layering and it will certainly see me into fall and I love the chocolate brown which is one of my colours so that's good. And this one which is a similar style also from Uniqlo and that sort of boucle material so warmer, a lovely warm fabric and again a boxy style. Grey is one of my colours, charcoal grey so that's all good. Now, by the way, just to say I'm not being an absolute zealot about the colours. If I love a colour and it makes me feel good, I'm going to keep it. The colour code is really a guide for me so that I don't make impulse buys. I don't see something I think looks beautiful, but then when I get it home, it won't suit me because I've done that so many times. And that's really one of the great things about doing 
about having your colours done. It will hopefully stop you from making impulse buys or mistake purchases. Now this shirt, it is my colours definitely, but I don't know, I just didn't wear it last year very much. I thought I'd wear it over a t-shirt because I like it. I think it was, it's Uniqlo, Inès de la Fressange, who is a French uh, model, and it's a lovely kind of brushed cotton fabric it's nice and warm i mean i'll keep it but i don't know whether i'm going to wear it much and if i don't wear it this autumn winter then i definitely think i'm going to either sell it or donate it now let's move on to a couple of things i bought from vintage which is a european resale company i think it's like poshmark in the state but it's a fantastic place to buy and sell pre-loved items now this and i think i did mention this in a video this is a beautiful cardigan by hardy amy's and hardy amy's was the Queen's designer back in the day and this is a really good quality black cardigan which of course goes over everything so I'm definitely keeping that it's absolutely beautiful just checking the moths haven't been at it I can't tell you I've been so careful we have terrible moth problems in this country and, I, and we do in this house I've had to fumigate so many times in the past but I'm very very careful about how I look after my clothes now so that's good, that's fine. What have we got here? That, right, more black sweaters. As you can see, we've got a lot of black sweaters here. Now, what have we got here? This is, oh yes. Now this one was another great find on Vinted. It needs a bit of a brush, but this is a cashmere sweater. Now this is a man's, as was that one. Sorry, I should have said that cardigan was a man's cardigan. And this is a man's sweater from Uniqlo, again from Vinted. Now what I liked about the men's v-neck cashmere sw sweaters from Uniqlo is that their v is deeper the v uh, for the women's was quite high and I didn't really like that so this was a really good find I think it was again only about 20 pounds or something and this is one of two cashmere sweaters that I bought a couple of years ago from Arquette which is a Swedish brand which is part of the H&M stable which I don't think yet is available in the States for some reason you've got and other stories and H&M but you don't seem to have Arquette don't know why but those of you based in the UK or in Europe will be able to get your hands on Arquette and it is really good so I'm definitely keeping that right let's go on to some things on hangers so here is a Lily Silk shirt. This is the very first shirt I ever bought from Lily Silk, and I'm sure you'll have come across them, everybody on YouTube in the beauty or fashion space talks about Lily Silk. Now, the only trouble with this is I slightly stained the front, but I think it's okay. I don't think it notices too much, but these shirts are really great. And this is not sponsored by Lily Silk, by the way. But I did actually get rid of my stripy Lily Silk shirt. I sold it on Vinted because I just wasn't wearing it. But this one and this one as well, which I mentioned in my colour code video, these I do wear and I really like them and they go with everything really. But I did get, oh, I also actually did buy a cream coloured one, which I got rid of, which is interesting because cream is supposed to be one of my colours, but I just didn't feel right in it somehow. I don't know whether it was a combination of the colour and the fabric that just didn't suit. Anyway, it went to a good home, so that's all good. Then I've got this top, which goes with the black wide leg trousers that I bought for myself at Christmas when I returned something my husband had bought me from Agnes B. So definitely keeping that. It's a lovely silk top. I must wear it more often. And these are the matching trousers, but actually these also look really good with one of those Lily Silk shirts. So definitely keeping those. And this is a dress which my darling husband bought me, which is in the same fabric, which again, I think I've modelled in previous fashion videos that I've done. And he bought me this just before lockdown, actually. And I've hardly worn it because we just haven't been out anywhere where I've had an occasion to wear it. But of course I will keep it and it is actually quite flattering, even though it's actually quite um, figure hugging. But I have a confession to make as well because I recently made a video about how to hide your tum and I'll link that down below for you as well. And I talked about not wearing shapewear. Don't kill me, but I have actually bought a piece of shapewear and I was sort of encouraged, not encouraged exactly, but I was having a dialogue with my lovely friend Cindy from Beyond 50 Skin who was asking my advice about shapewear because she was thinking of getting something. 
and I looked it up because Skims was all over the internet in the UK at the moment and I'd had a look at some of the stuff and I thought oh, I don't know I don't know and then I thought about Wackel which is a fantastic brand I think it might be German or Polish or it's European anyway and I found a pair of sort of hold you in shorts and I just thought gosh these look so amazing I'm going to order them and I'll put a picture up here so you can see them and I think they would really work very well for that dress and they don't make you feel like a sausage they're incredibly light material so I'll let you know how I get on with them I haven't actually worn them yet but they do feel quite comfortable once they're on of course you do have to tug them a bit but that's the whole point they're meant to hold you in a bit but they're not like the old-fashioned girdles right moving on to a couple of a couple more cashmere oh of course these are lily silk as well I've forgotten these these are my sort of slobbing cashmere the, these are the cashmere jumpers I wear on repeat at home when I'm working at home with leggings really comfortable and lovely this is kind of an oatmeal I think this is in my color palette I can't remember I'll have to show you all my little swatch cards actually I'll, I'll insert a picture of all my swatch cards in this video so you can see what they look like these are my absolute go-to's on repeat when I'm working at home or slobbing at home right what's in here these are very smart bags aren't they look at this these are special anti-moth bags I got from a company what they're called now total wardrobe care that's it i'll put their link below if you're interested they're very very good they've got all sorts of stuff oh yes <laughs> now this is a hat i'm definitely going to um sell or give away because it made me look like a smurf i just didn't like it at all i mean it's a lovely hat but it just didn't suit me and this hat i think i will keep i will keep this scarf and what's that oh yes this is Oh yeah, I'm definitely keeping, well, I don't know, am I keeping that? Yeah, I think I will. This is a Uniqlo woolen dress, black woolen dress. I do like it. I think I didn't wear it all that often, but I will keep that. So yes, we're definitely keeping those, except for the brown hat, which is definitely going. So yeah, we'll say goodbye to the hat. Right, I think I know what's in here, but we're definitely keeping those. They are some lovely sweaters I bought last year. Again, I think the colours are my colours. So these are two sweaters from Uniqlo. Love the chunkiness. Bought these because Natalie Martin, who's one of my favourite fashion YouTubers, recommended them and they're also from Uniqlo. So definitely keeping those. I think this is probably my colour, but I like it anyway, so that's all good. Oh yes, and this one, this is my Christmas jumper. <laughs> <laughs> this is my nod to a Christmas jumper the only thing I kept from Stitch Fix my one Stitch Fix box I was really not impressed with them I have to say but I did like this cotton sweater it's jolly it's got stars on it it's nice for Christmas day I think so I will definitely keep that right we come to another couple of cashmere jumpers now I'm sorry about the noise outside now this is a color which I think is in my color palette but I don't know whether it suits me or not. I just thought it was very attractive at the time. Now this is a From Future jumper, which I bought during lockdown, I think, and a friend who is French recommended it. And From Future is a really lovely company and they do beautiful sweaters. Most of them have designs on them, which I'm not that keen on, but the plain ones are good and the cashmere quality is very good. So I might keep that. Now, this is an interesting one. I nearly sold this. Now, this is definitely in my colour palette, but I just couldn't make it work. I'd put it on, I'd take it off. I just couldn't make up my mind about it. But now that I know it's in my colour palette, I'm definitely going to give it another go. So it will see me through another season. Whether I actually wear it or not is TBC, but we'll definitely give it a go. Right, what have we got in here? Ah, yes. Now, this is in my colour palette. Now, <laughs> I think I bought three of these, three different colours last season and I sold two of them because I just didn't wear them at all. I think one was a kind of a tan and the other one was a green and I just didn't reach for them whereas this one is my colour and I think I do like it. It's just quite a strong colour to wear close to your skin but it's in my palette so I'm definitely going to be giving it a go. It's a merino wool sweater so it's an ideal kind of transition fall to winter fabric because it's not too thick and it's smart enough to wear to work so I think I will keep this one. Ah yes this is a black version of the round neck this is a v-neck version also from Uniqlo. actually can't remember buying this it's a bit worrying isn't it <laughs> but anyway it's a, I'm sure it's a useful jumper to have because it's a simple reno wool which will go with anything really 
so I'll, I'll practice styling it and actually do you know what if I did buy that black satin skirt this would probably look really good with it so I might just give that a go ah yes now this brown cardi I absolutely love in the boxy style as we've talked about chocolate brown is my color so that's all good so we're definitely keeping that now this one I absolutely loved at the time and I wore it to death and then I sort of went off it. I think it's because it's alpaca and I did actually sell some of my alpaca jumpers that were mentioned in my very first capsule wardrobe for fall winter and they were on my list. So, but they're not now because I sold a couple of them but I kept this one because I like the colour, I like the style, it's boxy but it's quite oversized. So we'll definitely keep it and we'll see whether we wear it or not. Ah, now this is interesting. I'm not going to bother you with this scarf because I'm getting rid of it anyway. It was a cheapo thing from H&M. But this is an interesting thing. Now this was me in my quest to find colours that I could wear rather than just neutrals. And I bought this jumper. It was very cheap actually. It was from Oisho, I think. And I thought, oh, this is a beautiful colour. Now, what's interesting is I didn't reach for it very often at all, and it's not in my colour palette. In fact, hardly any blues are in my colour palette. Now, that's not to say that I don't want to wear blue, but actually the blues that I do have, this included, are not colours that I reach for unless it's navy, because I've actually got a blue chambray shirt, and every time I put it on, I take it off again. So I think there is something to this colour code idea because this I didn't reach for and this is definitely going to get decluttered. And finally we've got a couple of sweaters, actually this is a scarf, I'm not going to get rid of that because it's mulberry, very expensive, always good for wrapping you in. Of course it's purple, oh my gosh I've just realised I did actually have something purple, silly me. A pair of gloves and now these two sweaters are oversized and super comfortable. And these are from Oisho and I just lived in these during the winter because we had such a cold winter from sort of January to March. We had the fire on nearly every night, it was so cold. And these sweaters are the business. They are from this brand Oisho. I think Oisho is really focused on active wear but it did have some sweaters which I really liked and it's a brand that's part of the Zara stable. I'll link everything down below for you and I should have said all the companies, all the brands that I talk about will be linked down below for you in the description box. But I really love these. Again, I think this is in my colour palette, not sure, but I liked it anyway. And we'll definitely be keeping these. Now the one category of clothing or accessories in this case that we haven't talked about are shoes and boots. But honestly, if I did do that, this video is going to be so long. So I might do a dedicated shoe video and let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that. But most importantly, I need to now identify my gap. So I think my gaps, they're few and far between because obviously I've got a lot of clothes here, but I would quite like another pair of wider or barrel legged black trousers, but not jeans, something that's a little bit smarter, that's not very smart like the Agnes B, but that are not jeans. So I'm definitely going to be looking for those. I definitely want something purple because it, it's all very well having a purple scarf, but I actually would like to have a purple sweater. I do feel like I want to introduce some colour into my wardrobe, whether it is purple or possibly green as well, because I've got lots of greens in my palette. Possibly another cardigan, because at the moment I've only really got the black cardigan and the boxy brown cardigan, so maybe another cardigan that's maybe a bit longer, or maybe another boxy one, but in a colour, perhaps like a green or a purple again, or maybe a charcoal grey. And finally, I need the wedding guest dress. And I have already identified a few and I will do a dedicated video on my search for the perfect winter wedding guest dress. So look out for that in the coming month or two. So what do you think? Are you ready to sort through your full wardrobe? Do a little decluttering, a little sorting? and ready to identify some gaps. If you haven't seen part one of this series, I'll link the video down below for you in the description box. And that has some suggestions on items that you might want to consider to keep your wardrobe updated and exciting, whilst not jumping in to buy stuff that you don't actually need. And let me know in the comments if this type of video has been helpful to you. And if it has, I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell 
because that way you get notified each time I upload a video which at the moment is on Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock UK time. And if you can't get enough of me, and who can, then I have a monthly newsletter and in that I don't just talk about fashion, beauty and lifestyle but I also talk about books, music, podcasts, movies and other bits and bobs that make us happy. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm going to link a couple of videos that you might be interested in. One is from Frump to Fab and the other is Planning My Spring Closet. And thank you so much for watching. It means the absolute world to me. It really does. And I hope you're all doing really well. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye.